Remember those old Nokia phones? Indestructible, right? They were like the tanks of the mobile world, surviving drops, spills, and even the occasional run-in with a car tire. Well, inside those plastic bricks were tiny chips, the brains of the operation. These microchips were the unsung heroes making sure your snake game never lagged. And guess what? America practically owned that whole game. We were the pioneers, the trailblazers in the semiconductor industry. We're talking Intel, Qualcomm, the big dogs. These companies were the giants, the titans of tech, leading the charge in innovation and production. From our Silicon Valley throne room, we ruled the digital world. It was a golden era, a time when American ingenuity was at its peak. Fast forward to today, that dominance gone, baby gone. The landscape has shifted dramatically, like tears in the rain. Our once unassailable lead has evaporated, leaving us to wonder where it all went wrong. It's enough to make a bald eagle cry into its bud light, the symbol of American strength, now shedding a tear for lost glory. What happened? Two words, China happened. They saw an opportunity and seized it with both hands. While we were busy arguing about pineapple on pizza, China was playing a whole different game, a long game. They invested heavily in technology and infrastructure. And guess what? They're winning, big time. Their relentless focus and strategic planning are paying off in spades. Buckle up, folks, because the future of tech is looking a lot more red, white, and, well, you get the picture. The global tech landscape is changing, and we need to adapt or be left behind. America doesn't like to lose especially not to some up-and-coming communist country with a thing for pandas and questionable human rights practices. So, what did we do? We hit them where it hurts, their tech, enter the sanctions, we slapped tariffs on Chinese goods, we blacklisted their tech companies, Huawei, ZTE, you name it, we even strong-armed our allies into joining the party. The message was clear. You want to play ball in the big leagues, you gotta play by our rules. Problem is, China wasn't about to back down. They saw our sanctions as a declaration of war a war for technological supremacy, and they were ready to fight fire with fire, or in this case, billions of dollars in research and development. Remember that whole throw money at the problem strategy? Yeah, China took that memo and ran with it. We're talking a cool $410 billion investment in their domestic chip industry. That's right folks, billion with a B. Enough to make even Jeff Bezos blush. And let's just say, those investments weren't going towards making knockoff fidget spinners, China built state-of-the-art fabrication plants, poached top engineers from around the world, and basically turned their entire tech sector into a well-oiled chip-making machine. The result? China's chip industry went from zero to hero faster than you can say, made in China. And it wasn't just about quantity, they were catching up on quality too. Remember when China was the world's factory churning out cheap plastic toys and questionable electronics? Yeah, those days are over. China's not just making the stuff anymore, they're calling the shots. Case in point, chip imports. In just a few years, China slashed its reliance on foreign chips by a whopping 50%. That's like ditching your dealer and growing your own weed except, you know, with less paranoia and more economic domination. And it gets better. While we were busy patting ourselves on the back, China's global market share in semiconductors doubled. That's right, doubled. They're now breathing down the necks of giants like Intel and TSMC. And let's just say, those giants are starting to sweat. Tech titans beware China's chip triumphs. So, China's making more chips but are they any good? Short answer, yes, really good. We're talking cutting-edge technology that rivals anything coming out of Silicon Valley. Take their 7 nanometer processors, for example. These bad boys are the brains behind everything from smartphones to supercomputers, and guess what? They're made in China. Or how about their 232-layer NAND flash memory? This technology is used in everything from your laptop to your Tesla. And yep, you guessed it, China's got that covered too. China's not just playing catch-up anymore, they're innovating, they're pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the world of tech. And that, my friends, is what should really scare the pants off Uncle Sam. Musk's misstep tech billionaire, political pawn? Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, what about Elon Musk? He's friends with all the politicians. Surely he can smooth things over with China. Well, about that, let's just say Elon's attempts to play tech ambassador haven't exactly gone according to plan. He's been criticized for cozying up to the Chinese government, even as they crack down on dissent in Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Talk about awkward dinner conversations. The truth is, even the richest man in the world can't bridge the political and ideological divide between the US and China. This isn't just about chips anymore, it's about two superpowers vying for global dominance. And there's no easy way out of this one. Canada's counterpunch Maple Leaf Rebellion, remember Canada? Our friendly neighbor to the north? 
the land of vast landscapes, friendly people and maple syrup, the ones with the funny accent and the unhealthy obsession with hockey? Yeah, those guys. Well, turns out they're not too happy with us these days. And it's not just about hockey rivalries. See, when we slapped tariffs on China, we didn't exactly consult our Canadian pals. We kind of left them out in the cold. And guess what? They weren't thrilled. In fact, they were downright angry. In retaliation, they hit back with their own tariffs on US goods. A tit-for-tat move that caught many by surprise. Talk about a slap in the face with a hockey glove, it was a bold statement. But it goes beyond just tariffs, this is about more than just trade wars. Canada's been quietly but steadily reducing its economic dependence on the US. They're diversifying their trade partners, they're signing new trade deals with Asia and Europe, expanding their economic horizons, they're investing heavily in renewable energy, aiming for a greener future, they're basically telling us we don't need you anymore. It's a declaration of independence in the economic sense, and that, my friends, is a big deal. It's a shift in the balance of power, and it's something we need to pay attention to. The New World Order alliance is in flux. The world is changing. The old alliances are crumbling. And the U.S. is no longer the undisputed leader of the free world or, you know, the world in general. China's rise has upended the global order. Countries are being forced to choose sides. And many are deciding that, maybe, just maybe, aligning themselves with the rising dragon isn't such a bad idea. This isn't just about economics, it's about values, ideology, and who gets to write the rules of the game in the 21st century. And right now it's looking like China's holding all the cards. America's uncertain future. Can the eagle soar again? So where does this leave America? The land of the free and the home of the brave is facing some tough questions. Well, let's just say the future ain't looking too bright. We've got rising costs, weakening alliances, internal instability, and a society that's more divided than ever, and an economy that's shakier than a squirrel on a double espresso. The financial markets are volatile, and uncertainty looms large. The truth is, we can't win this fight by playing the same old game. The world is changing, and we need to change with it. We can't bully our way to the top anymore. We need to adapt. We need to innovate. We need to find new ways to collaborate and build bridges. We need to start playing nice with others, or at least, you know, not be jerks. Diplomacy and cooperation are the keys to a brighter future. The question is, are we up to the challenge? Do we have the resolve and the vision to rise above our current struggles, or will the American Eagle be grounded for good? Only time will tell. The stakes are high and the path forward is uncertain, but one thing's for sure, it's going to be one hell of a ride. Buckle up America, the journey ahead will test our mettle and our spirit.